Hello there guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome to Survive Russia. We are out and about in the woods, we are not far from the homestead yet, but uh, yeah, I've been up since uh, 5.30, doing all sorts of funky stuff. And today, one of the things we're going to do today anyway, is that we're going to take a look at five unusual survival items. It's like five items that uh, you don't see really that often or at all actually. Yeah, we are out today doing uh, all sorts of uh, outdoorsy funky stuff that uh, <laughs> I do <laughs> this time of year here. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe I'm gonna shoot a few videos for you guys who sit in, uh, in your apartments or houses or whatever and kind of get out and stuff like that. Yeah, I went straight through the snow earlier. Something like this. And this is not awesome when that happens every 10, 30, 50 meters. Not when you have to be out in the woods all day long. Oi, that's it. That's it happens again. And it's almost to the knees, right? So we're gonna get the small snowshoes. That is for sure. All right, guys. So uh, five unusual or uncommon survival items. As Big John McCarthy would say, let's get it on. Before we start the video here, I would say that uh, there will be links in the description to merchandise because uh, Mr. Survival Russia and my uh, specialist buddy, Ivan, have uh, made a new design of the SRV. I think it's really, really, really awesome. So uh, if you want to support the channel and buying some merchandise, then uh, please check the merch link in the description. And if you want to support the channel in general, you can also do that in the description links. And I, of course, like to thank all you guys who still keep supporting the channel because it means the world for the channel, I can tell you. So here's the first guy. It's a knife. It's a cold steel. Raja 2. Some of you guys know that I carry this uh, from time to time, but it's a folding kukri. And you can say uh, it's not an uncommon knife, but I very rarely see it uh, in, in the outdoors, in the, in the connection to the outdoors, you can say. But it's an awesome knife because a kukri is an awesome outdoors knife, it's an awesome survival tool. And this is like a mini kukri, even the knife is not that mini. But uh, it can do a lot of cool stuff. One of the things is it chops really well. And uh, we're building a fire down here. So uh, let me show you something that it also can do. This is some uh, resinous pine. And because we have this little curvature in the blade, it's really awesome for scraping off scrapings, which can uh, ignite, be ignited really, really easy. So let me show you that real fast. I mean, most knives can do this, but this just happens to, to do it pretty well. This is good stuff. I will show you most of the five items in use, but let's uh, finish off with the, with the cold steel here, because we have to light this fire over here, right? It's not the end-all, be-all chopper, right? But for its size, not that big, it's, it's, it performs very, very well. Good item to carry. I carry it often. The next item we're going to take a look at is something I very rarely see on YouTube and stuff like that. No, it's not a Swiss Army knife. It is a Swiss Army knife. But of course, the little ferro rod here. The little survival ferro rod from Flyer. Flyer Fly! <laughs> the little Firefly ferro rod. This is, uh, must be the world's next smallest because they have an even smaller model these are really awesome they fit into the to the swiss army knife but inside of this multi mount here behind a piece of uh, of duct tape or what we can call it i have another one of these guys here because they, they fit everywhere in a wallet and whatnot they are super awesome so let's start the fire with this little guy here before we go down there and start the fire i want to show you something a little tip on how to use them because they're very thin, this is the improved model, but uh, it can of course break because it's very thin and the more you use it, the, the more prone to breaking it would be. But if you have a secondary striker, I mean, the saw here works pretty well as a striker, but what you can do is that you can take the firefly here and you put it like this on top of the saw blade and strike it with something that means that you will not break this little guy here. Let me show you how it works. Let me show you its features. So we'll take this little guy here, put it on the blade. I have some birch bark down here, which I have scraped a little bit with the knife. Let's see if I can get it going. Yes. Yeah. 
So that's a little firefly. It was not the optimal position, working position, you can say. But the firefly, super awesome. All right, so the next item or items will have to be taken into use here really, really fast because uh, I use it for boiling water. What we have here is my nail kit. I actually had some questions from, uh, from several viewers subscribers whatnot about what kind type of uh, nails do you use and uh, what size of uh, wire and all that good stuff but you see these two are pretty different I think these are most likely four inches or something ten centimeters these are a little bit shorter this is the guy I use the most the wire is just I don't know what it is a millimeter or something like this but uh, yeah this is for more serious use you can say it's of course also a lot heavier this is what I normally just carry on me, but uh, if I go to the deep forest, to the hunting cabin and stuff like this, I'll have this guy here with me as well. Wires, of course, super useful. It's a farmer's best friend, right? And uh, one thing it's really good for is uh, building shelter, because you'll need to use a lot less wire than uh, cordage, ordinary cordage, because you only need a few windings and you can uh, tighten it down with a multi-tool or just with the fingers and it will hold on now yeah, hold up really really well but what i also use it for is for fire related stuff like boiling water so let's boil some water here because uh, i need some tea and then we can hang it over the fire there's only two nails left in this kit because i used them so uh, i think i had six or eight or something in the old kit So wire nail kit, I think it's a must have in a survival kit. And I know gonna, somebody is going to say, yeah, yeah, but if you have equipment and all that good stuff, then it's not survival, then it's camping. Listen, if you are lost or have lost your bearings, or I have lost my bearings up here, take a look out here. Here you can walk for days or weeks if you lost your bearings, right? Doesn't matter how much equipment you have. Of course, the equip equipment will help. But if you lost your bearings out here, you have a big problem on your hands. That's for dang sure. Maybe our, our only hope will be to simply just wait it out until we can see moon, stars or sun or something like this. It could take two days, three days, five days, a week. Who knows? I mean... Yeah, you have a backpack, you have a little bit of food and uh, some equipment or maybe a tarp and a sleeping bag or something. You will still be in a survival situation being lost here. I can tell you that for sure. Our next item is a little bit boring. It's a power bank. It's definitely something to carry if we go on a small hunting scout or something like this. If we have navigation devices or phones with us or something like this, right? But uh, the previous summer here... Two of our local boys, they got lost here. I made a video on it actually, but uh, they got lost out picking mushrooms. They, I mean, they picked mushrooms here many times and berries and stuff like that. But they lost their bearings. One of them had a power bank and a phone, but there were a big search party out, party out looking for them. Local farmers, police with sirens and driving down here and out there you know with sirens with the hand cranked sirens and stuff like that they didn't hurt anything they were honking their horns so there were 30 guys looking for them and uh, yeah they had their lighter and uh, one of them was smoking <laughs> they had a lighter their phone and their power bank and uh, finally they found out i think during the next morning or something that hey we can actually try and use our google maps or whatever maps they used to try and uh, find their way out. But what happened was that they were circling, right? This is the classic example. Walking, walking, walking. Oh, we think there's a north, we can get home there and there. No, they ended up right where they were several hours later, and that's where they decided to just hunker down for the night. So power bank is a very good idea. All right, guys, so we're down to the last item. 
some of you might find this uh, ridiculous or useless, especially if you are in, from, uh, from the US, right? Uh, but before we, I show you this item here, I would like to say that this is of course not what I think you should carry. This is just additional items and unusual items that I very rarely or never see on the big survival channels and all that good stuff, right? But uh, all of these uh, items, I think, makes a lot of sense. They make a lot of sense to me in a way. But let's take a look at the last item here. We have it here, a little guy. I will have to cover it up a little bit. It's unfortunately a little bit uh, of a unpopular item, so I will not show it in great detail and all that stuff. But uh, it's of course not uh, a real printer. This guy prints with uh, size 45 rubber rounds. And you'll say, rubber rounds? Wow, what the hell is that? Why you wanna even want to bother to carry it here? But actually, Will, <laughs> Will go, <laughs> my buddy in the States, he, he was like, why don't you carry it if, if you can? After that, I actually started to do it because I was thinking, ah, what, what the hell? But anyway, if you, if you think it's ridiculous, then uh, check this video up here that I will link to where I'm testing it on a chicken. Uh, uh, not a live chicken, but... Uh, I, I print these uh, rubber balls through two layers of heavy wool coat wool. They, they, they are not toys by any means. And what I noticed is that, uh, for example, I made a big bull moose up here a few years ago, right? I was out hunting, uh, but it was not uh, moose season. But anyway, he was standing there and a very, very, very big, beautiful guy. Huge guy. But uh, okay. I tried to circle around him, and then I ran into a snowshoe here. I shot the snowshoe here, and the bull moose took off. On three, five meters distance, this guy here hits very, very hard. So it's better than nothing. So that is, anyway, my fifth unusual, uncommon survival tool. All right, guys, so that was my five unusual, uncommon survival items, which I carry from time to time. Sometimes I only carry a few of them or one of them. It you know, depends on, the, on where we're going or where I'm going, right? But uh, there'll be links in the description to the Firefly, Ferrorods, they are super, super awesome. There'll be links to the, to the merchandise and if you want to support the channel and all that good stuff. So guys, until next time, get out and train, get it done, if you can, if you can't, I hope you will soon have the possibility to get out and train and get it done. See you in the next video, guys. Thank you very much for your time.